so. And all community members in Montreal. So if you or a friend, other relatives and neighbors want to have a radio show on CJLO, of the two radio stations at Concordia. There was a station at the downtown campus and also a station at the Loyola campus. And in 1998, they came together to form CJLO. So we have been internationally recognized. We've been to conferences all around the world, including South by Southwest. Many of our alumni go on to work at CBC and CJAD and other places. So if you're interested in getting your start in radio, CJLO is the place you need to go. If you're interested in doing a podcast, CJLO is here to help you complete that. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get started. So I'm going to be doing the very daunting.
Can you hear me now? I think that sounds like you can hear me. Can you hear me now? Oh my God, sorry everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, Should I, I'll start my presentation. <laughs> I'll start my presentation over again. Sorry everybody, I really didn't know. It's, it's very bizarre, but I'll start over and I'll be as brief as I can be. Um, okay, so. Okay. All right, so once again, <laughs> I'm Francella Fialos. I'm the station manager at CJLO 1690 AM, which is Concordia's university radio station. I also worked at CKDU, which was the campus radio station at Dalhousie and started off as a volunteer at CKCU, which is the station at Carleton University. So I've worked in campus radio for a long time, um, starting off as a volunteer, when I was doing my journalism degree at Carleton, and then I moved on to do my master's degree of journalism at the University of King's College in Halifax. I've worked at CBC for a little bit, which was kind of a whatever experience. Uh, I've received training from NPR, the Association of Independence and Radio, and also Duke University. So I feel like I have some competencies related to radio making. Um, clearly not when it comes to streaming, but I think we're all good now. So thank you to the CSU for pointing that out to me. I'm so sorry once again. Meet Super Connected. It's my baby. It is my show, which is on every Monday at 11 a.m. on CJLO 1690 a.m. and CJLO.com. Uh, I've been hosting it for four years now, which is very hard to believe. So since 2016, um, and Super Connected is kind of like an eclectic music show. I love guitars, so I feel like there's a lot of guitars on Super Connected. And as such, like the genres I like to focus on are like punk and post-punk and garage rock. Uh, but we're we're gonna we're gonna get into the premise of Super Connected a little bit later. Is everything okay? Can everyone hear me okay? Is everything okay? Thank you. Can everyone hear me? I just feel a lot of static, so I'm not sure what's going on. Can everyone hear me? Hello? Okay, I... Okay, um... I'm guessing that people can hear you. Yeah, I hear a lot of white noise too, and I'm not really sure why that's the case. It just kind of happens very randomly.
Can everyone hear me now? Yes, no? Can everyone hear me? Yes, okay. All right, I've identified the issue. So it has to do with the uh, interface that I'm using. So I'll have to like start and stop it every 20 minutes. So if you bear with me, we'll get through this together in one piece. I'm really sorry, everybody. This is like insane to me. Um, oh dear. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and resume the workshop. And yeah, every 20 minutes, once we hear that white noise, I'll have to like exit out the interface and restart it um, because I'm on the trial mode. All right, so a bit about Super Connected. So like I said previously, and you couldn't hear me, uh, music shows do require a lot of thought and consideration and care. It's not necessarily just a playlist that's thrown together and then talking in between. There does need to be a lot of consideration, some research, some different things added to make a music show unique and, and wonderful. So here are some questions that can help you develop or fine tune your idea. What is the why of your show? What are you trying to accomplish? Every great music show solves a need, uh, like solves a problem, fulfills something special, and brings something new to the table. How is your show different from anything else out there? Uh, at CJLO and a lot of campus radio stations, we hear a lot of like indie Canadian music shows. And I think if you're going to present a show like that, like it has to be something unique and interesting and different. So either you're going to present a show that's music based in the Maritimes or show that's based in the prairies. So something that's unique and different. What will you bring to the table specifically? So what will you as a host offer to audiences? How will you be able to make this interesting? Why should you host a show on XYZ genre? Some questions that can help you really fine tune your idea so that you can actually be an expert or an authority of whatever it is you're gonna be talking about and playing. And this question, which I like very much, in 10 words or less, what is your show's idea? So, this is a question I heard in a conference for radio. Eric Nezem, who used to work at NPR, which is National Public Radio, gave this question to the audience. I think he now works at Audible. And it's just a way to help you fine tune and finesse your idea. He took like very famous shows like This American Life and Invisibilia, and he applied this question and he was able to think of something that was 10 words or less. So it's just like a, a very helpful exercise for you. Uh, let's break down Super Connected. So what is the why of the show? I like to think that Super Connected delivers strange and interesting guitar-driven music that's usually made in Canada, but all over the world as well. Uh, when I started my show, I didn't really hear a lot of obscure things being played um, in conjunction of more well-known things. So like, I really wanted a very eclectic show to bring to the table. How is it different? So... I like to play music that spans different eras and different genres, music that is mostly obscure and forgotten, specifically Canadian music that is obscure, uh, and things that like you wouldn't normally hear. So for instance, right now, I've been really interested in the DIY scene of Chicago and the post-punk scene that's happening there. And I feel like I'm not really hearing a lot of that on other radio stations, but I am hearing that, of course, on my own show because I have an ear for emerging acts and scenes. Which brings me to the next point. So what do I bring? I bring a passion and enthusiasm. I bring an ear for emerging acts. I bring an interest in obscure Canadian classics. And I bring just a huge love and appreciation for anything that sounds weird. So it doesn't have to be too deep when you think about why you, it can just be that you love it and you're interested in it. The show in 10 words. This is something that I like to say at the beginning of every show. It's old favorites, new releases, hot takes. Um, that's something I like to say, of course, I think it's a little broad. Um, so you can always fine tune and finesse your show in 10 words. But like I said, it's just a helpful exercise and you can actually develop a catchphrase when you do that. 
Okay, first step, selecting your music. So there are multiple avenues in which you can find and source music for your show. First off, CJLO has a pretty extensive digital library. We have various music directors overseeing different genres. So we have a metal music director, an electronic music director, um, a hip hop music director, a world music director. And then we have our head music director who also covers rock, indie, and alt. So each of these people do curate their own digital libraries and shares it with programmers when asked or if there's like any new releases coming up that are pretty notable, we'll just share it wide among our membership. Bandcamp, I find Bandcamp is like the most ethical way to source music these days. Um, so it's a great way to discover music. You can find things that are based in or like anchored with specific tags. So an artist will put up their album and they'll also use specific genre tags and things can get quite niche. So if you even click on like the punk genre tag, it it's like broken down further in subgenres. So there's like garage rock and like no wave and synth wave and cold wave. Like that's all within the punk family. Things are also categorized on Bandcamp through geotags. So if you're doing a show of Canadian music based in the prairies, like maybe you would want to find music that's tagged with Lethbridge and Calgary and Saskatchewan and Regina and all those places that can help you curate a show. And of course, your own library. So if you have a digital collection or a physical collection, that's a great way to source music. I think a frequent question would be like, but can I use Spotify? And what I will say is that if you're going to be a new volunteer at CJLO producing a music show, you'll probably pre-record that show, meaning you'll prepare it in advance of its air date. And if you're going to do that, then you'll need the audio files, MP3 or WAV files of your specific songs. There are ways you can access that. So you can either buy music through iTunes or Bandcamp. Or if it's something that's like a little bit more obscure, there are various Bandcamp rippers and YouTube rippers, but I didn't officially say that. Okay, so you have your music. There is something that you need to know if you're going to be volunteering at CJLO. We have to think of something called Canadian content. Now, Canadian content is like a term that's thrown around quite frequently. For our purposes, it's just related to music. So as a campus and community radio station, we, we are required to play 35% of Canadian music every hour. So that comes to a general 35% music that is Canadian that you will always hear on CJLO. That is a rule that is uh, that was applied by the Canadian Radio Telecommunications Commission of Canada, um, which is the governmental body that oversees every radio station, including CJLO. Um, how would you know if something is Canadian? We have this thing in Canada called the Maple System. So it stands for Music, Artist, Performance, and Lyrics. M is for Music, Artist, Performance is like where they perform the actual actual track or actual album, and the lyrics, of course, being the actual words for a song. Um, two out of the four of those categories have to be performed by a Canadian. So for instance, like Neil Young, who is Canadian, but has not lived in Canada since like the mid 60s, would still be considered Canadian content because he writes the music, he is the artist, and he's also the lyricist. But there are some Justin Bieber songs, for instance, that would not fall under Canadian content because only Justin Bieber, the artist who is interpreting the song, is Canadian. The person who wrote the music isn't Canadian, the person who wrote the lyrics isn't Canadian, and they recorded the track in a studio in LA or something. These percentages also vary. So 35% is the percentage for popular music. So that would be genres like pop, rock, indie, alternative, hip hop, um, R&B. And then there are also specialty music genres. So we're thinking like reggae or opera or experimental. That percentage is different. It would be 12%. 
And then, of course, there's third language programming, which you can hear on campus radio all the time. So they still have to follow Canadian content as well. Their percentage is 7%. So 7% of the songs that they play have to be Canadian content. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they'll have to play like, I don't know, a uh, a Sloan song during their Persian radio song. What it means is that they can play a song in Persian, but the performer is Canadian and they recorded them. They recorded the song in Toronto or in Montreal. That would still fit as Canadian content. We do welcome third language programming, by the way. So if you want to do a show in Spanish and play Spanish music or in Urdu or in per like if you want to have a show in Persian, Please, please, please apply to have a show at CJLO. That is one of the mandates of Canvas and community radio stations. Okay, so you have your music. 35% of it is Canadian. What are you going to say in between songs? You need to do a little bit of research and you need to hit some specific points. So typically what is ideal to hear as a listener is obviously the song title and the artist and some extra things like the album title, the record label, the year if you're playing something that was not produced this year and the release date. So typically like the month or even the week that it was released. So this is how it would sound like. You just listened to Shamika by Fiona Apple that came out of Fetch the Bolt, Cutter, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, which was released back in March. So that's kind of like a general song ID that you would use when you play a song and then do what is known as your back sell. So that's when you come back on air and talk about the music. So those are some key points to hit. Um, it's always a good idea to list out the record label in case someone likes that artist or that song that they played and want to discover artists that sound like that. So that's typically what a label is for. So I can say something like, we just heard brand new Tef Age that comes to us from Mint Records. So now people know that they can check out Mint Records if they want to listen to other bands or other albums that sound like Tef Age. Other additional things that can help you make your back sell a bit more interesting, you can look up reviews, interviews, press releases to kind of give you an idea as to what the song is about, what the conditions the artist was in during the time of recording or producing their album. Anything else you feel is special or remarkable. So for instance, if you know a band that you like is also a fan of Fiona Apple, that might be a good thing to add. And your own feelings and opinions of the song that you're choosing to play. That's always a nice thing to add. It adds a personal touch. The audience gets to know you better. And like that's how you can establish your own brand and your own reputation as a host. Okay. <clears throat> Recording equipment. So you have your music, 35% of it's Canadian. You have your research. Now you actually have to record your show. So I've listed out like four categories that are pretty crucial to record any radio show. First off, you need a microphone. So currently right now for this workshop, I'm using a Shure SM58 and Zoom H4n. Shure SM58 is like the standard microphone that you'll see in like any show back when there was live music. Um, it's also known as a uni, unidirectional condenser mic. So what that means is that it only gets the sound from one place on the microphone head and a condenser mic. So that means that it can do a good job of getting more quiet frequencies like the human voice. There are also dynamic mics and omnidirectional mics. That's kind of more for musical purposes, but if you're looking for something for your voice, Shure SM58 is pretty, pretty top notch. The Zoom H4n is also a pretty great recorder. You can use it as an audio interface, which I'm doing right now, and that I do to record my own show. I plug in the Zoom in my laptop and then I record my show that way. Um, you can also use the Zoom H4n on its own. You can add an external microphone or use the internal microphone that it has built in the recorder. Of course, USB mics are all the rage right now. The Blue Yeti mic is probably like the standard USB mic on the market. 
but it's quite expensive. It's like $150 to $180, um, but it's a pretty straightforward microphone. The audio quality is pretty good, especially if you're just starting out. But of course, you can also research other USB mics that are on the market. If you're just, just starting out and you don't really have the budget to buy external equipment yet or the need to buy external equipment yet, you can also use the microphone on your headphones or AirPods, the internal mic on your laptop, or the voice memo app on, on your iPhone or your phone. Uh, and then of course, there are some ways to make the audio sound even better. The classic trick is like to record yourself under a duvet in a closet. That way you can trap the audio much, much more effectively and you can get a warmer audio quality. So it sounds like you would be in the studio. Headphones over-the-ear headphones for editing. That way you can kind of hear every little bit of what's going on. Earbuds for listening. That way you can also do like an audio scan of the environment in which you're recording. Various other audio components, XLR cable, Y cable, RCA cable. Those are just cables that can connect a microphone to your audio interface if you're like me and using a Zoom H4n. And an SD card, of course, to save any audio files on your recorder. Miscellaneous stuff, so like batteries, laptop, phone, adapter. So let's say you have one of those cables and you need something else to, to plug it in. That's where an adapter comes in. Splitter, so if you only have one headphone jack and you need to plug in a microphone and your headphones, you can use a splitter to do that. And a pen and paper, always handy. All right, so you have your equipment. You're ready to do your voiceover. So a distance for your mic. Um, this kind of varies from person to person. I'm more soft-spoken. So I start with a fist distance away. The mic is like pretty close to my mouth. It's also on the side of the, your mouth or around your chin. That way you can avoid something known as plosives. So if I'm talking now and I have a plosive, you can hear the pop of the P as I say plosive, and you kind of want to avoid that as a radio producer. You're going to figure out as you practice where to position the mic the best. Like I said, I'm a bit more soft-spoken, so I, I keep the mic fairly close to myself, but you figure that out as you go along. Some important bits when you're doing your voiceover, um, be sure to give the station and show IDs. So that sounds like this. You're listening to CJLO 1690 AM in Montreal, Quebec. You are listening to Super Connected. I'm your host, Francella. So in that phrase, I kind of gave all the crucial information, the call letters of the station, the frequency of the station, the location of the station, the name of the show, and the name of the host. It's always important to give that information regularly to remind listeners what they're listening to. And of course, the song and artist in the order that they were played. So if you're a listener of radio, this has probably happened to you where you listen to the radio and there's like this amazing song that has been played and you want to know the name of it so you can download it or buy it or, or have it for your own collection. That's why it's always a good idea to give the songs and the artists in the order that they were played so that listeners can be guided. Some helpful phrases and transitions. Um, don't go anywhere after you're done. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to CJLO 1690 AM. I'm your host, Francella. That's always a good thing to say. I like to say near the end, I've been your host. This has been super connected because it's wrapping up. The show, the show is done. So it's always a good thing to say. This is, this is Wares, this is Danzig, this is George Harrison. So that's always a very useful thing to say. Keep it locked is like kind of like a dumb phrase, but it saved my life so many times when I'm like struggling on how to end it. Keep it locked. You're listening to CJLO 1690 AM. After that, we heard X, Y, Z. So again, making sure that you're keeping that sequence to guide listeners. Coming up next, we're going to listen to... Um, Godspeed You Black Emperor, Backwash, and U.S. Girls. So again, keeping that sequence to anticipate what's going to come next so that listeners are primed. Thank you for joining me. Always something you want to end off with. Um, the listeners have joined you on your journey 
of your show. And it's always good etiquette to give the name and the host of the show that follows yours. So usually I end with, thank you for joining me. Coming up next, we're going to hear the Sears Bureau with Chris the Frog. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. That's usually how I always end my show. All right. You've done your voiceover. You have your music. You have your equipment.
money needed. Okay, was I okay? Okay, okay. Um, can you hear me now? No. Okay, I was muted. Do you hear me? Okay. All right. Ooh, sorry, everybody. Okay. <laughs> it's so tough because like I can't, if I'm sharing my screen, I can't see the chat. That's, that's how it is. Um, all right. So back in Audacity. So I just want to do a simple edit. So I'm going to zoom in over here. And do this again. Well, here's what I'll say. Um, I think your comparison to Unwound was really spot on in that the band Women also inspires like this really deep sense of fervor among its fans. And what I'll say is that you'll find that on like the internet, on like Reddit. Okay. So over here, I think in that the band women also, the band, um, okay. So I said, um, here, typically you do want to clean up ums and ahs. They're just filler words. And sometimes they take up a lot of space. Um, just going to do a quick check. We're all good, right? You can hear me. You can see me. You can hear audacity. Yeah. I'm get. I'm guessing that yes. Woo. All right, back to audacity. So I want to cut this. Um, basically, all you have to do is use the selection tool, click, drag, and then that part is highlighted. And then all you have to do is click delete. And that's basically it. Say, I think your comparison to Unwound was really spot on. It okay, so that's like a fine edit. Um, let's try to find something a little bit harder. One point, like there was a film going to be made about women, and there's footage out there about them breaking up. It is. It's like the kind of. It kind of feels like the. Okay, so I kind of. I kind of stumbled by saying uh, it kind of the kind of it kind of feels, so let's say I just want to have it start on the second and kind of so that it's a little bit smoother and I sound a bit more polished so again click and drag delete it is it's like it kind of feels like the classic like that sounds a little bit better um I want to do something real quick let's see how it will sound when I remove this breath it's like it kind of feels it's like it kind of it's like it kind of do you all hear that it's like not very natural sounding that's known as a jump cut it doesn't really sound very natural it doesn't sound like how a normal person would talk um breaths are usually like the first casualty of jump cuts and yeah it's like not really something you want to take out always try to leave in breaths when you can and that just comes with practice when you leave in breaths and when you take them out. So once again, just leave that breath in there. It's, it's like, it kind of feels like the classic that sounds a little bit more natural. So that's how you do simple edits on Audacity. Okay, so volume and gain adjustment. So like I said, I'm pretty soft-spoken, so I usually have to put on some amplification every time I work on audio of myself. There are a few ways to do that on Audacity. There is like the ultra simple way. All I have to do is double click and select everything, go into effect and then click amplify and then click okay. So as it's, as it's loading, basically what it will do is we'll take all of my audio and kind of boost up the sound a little bit. Um, it also unfortunately like boosts the mic sound that is like a natural process of recording yourself. So you'll hear the static in between speeches, like in between like, like talking a bit louder too. So that's one thing you have to take into consideration. There you go. It's a little bit, a little bit better. If there are certain specific sections that I wanted to boost the volume, I could just use this envelope tool that I mentioned. So I click on the envelope tool and basically I can just click 
and drag some portions of audio that I want boosted and click once again and drag some pieces of audio that I want decreased. This is basically how you can do fade ins and fade outs. So I'm just gonna do like a couple in the middle in the middle of the audio so you can hear some like really drastic stuff and get the idea. Okay. Well, here's what I'll say. I think your comparison to Unwound was really spot on in that the band Women also inspires like this really deep sense of fervor among its fans. And what I'll say is that you'll find that on like the internet, on like Reddit and forums specifically about music. Like there, I mentioned before with- So you can kind of hear that like women. my voice, so apparently not as loud as it usually tour. is. And like a I've been here. it's like it kind of feels like the classic like Sugar Man story in a way, where like this was a band that made and like slowly, slowly getting louder. So I can even increase if I wanted to. So yeah, so that's how you do fade ins and fade outs manually. Of course, there's also another simple way to do that. You can just click and select a certain selection on your waveform and then click either fade out and fade in and Audacity can do that for you. I would do that when I have to do like very tiny, tiny sections of audio. Like for instance, if I make an edit and it sounds kind of jumpy, but like I can't really work around that, I kind of fade out what, um, what the edit was. So it sounds a little bit more natural because there's this other element of artistry and production that is unknown to us because only they know the answers to it. And that's why you see, and that's why you see and hear all of these like carbon copies of women and only a few that instead of trying to replicate it, try to do much more. So you can hear my voice not sound as loud. Okay, we're doing okay. <laughs> we can hear audacity. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Okay, so some other helpful tips. Um, if you do a show and it's a music show, you'll have to add your music files too. That just is how it has to be. How to import audio tracks. You just go into file, input or import audio. That little color wheel of horror approaching. <laughs> and you can go to wherever your music is. It's in the downloads. I'm going to pick a song from this album that I've downloaded. Pick this song. And then you just click open. And then it's importing the MP3 file into your Audacity project. There you go. So that's my song file. So like I mentioned earlier, songs typically are in stereo, which means there's a left and right channel. Even super zoomed out, you can see like some very minor differences between the left and right channel. Um, typically for songs, I don't really do any editing for songs, so I leave it as is. I don't convert them into mono. Okay, so let's say I wanted to move this track because they're obviously playing at the same time and I don't want that. I kind of want more of a staggered effect. I'll go into this like double arrow tool, which is just a cursor to move things. And I click and drag where I want the track to live. So in this fade out section, that's where I'm gonna play my music. So apparently there was a So in that, you can hear both my faint talking and the song. Okay, so just wanted to look at my notes once again, time syncing and splicing. All right, so there will be times where you have like a lot of files going on. So I'll show you an example of like a pretty intense um, project I did very recently for my show where I had like various audio components. 
Um, and when you have that the case, and when you have that, um, basically, basically it can get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly. And you'll need to develop some ways to make sure that the specific pieces of audio you want to work on are being worked on and others are left alone. Um, that's just what happens when you create something with various audio components. There are some things that you want to work on, other things not so much, and you try to move things, you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically, this is an example of like a pretty intense audio project. This is the rendered file of the final thing. So basically what that means is that I took all of those components and made it into one track. Typically, if I do my show, that's what I'll put in the final project of my show. This is just like one segment. So let's say I wanted to add some more music. So again, import audio. Gonna find public strain. I'll play China Steps. Okay, so one helpful tip when you have various tracks going on and you kind of want to just see the whole thing, one thing I like to do is I go to this like triangle right here at the label of the track and I just click it. I typically do that for songs because like I said, I don't really edit songs and that way I can kind of see the whole thing and it fits to image. So let's say I wanted to just work on these two things and not this song. So one thing I can do is zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna go to my selection tool I'm gonna click and drag everything here, and then I'm gonna move it. Let's say I want to do that. I want to move it to another place. That's how I can do that. So basically it's kind of like a lasso tool. Um, you can click and drag what you want, move it, and, and then you can fit wherever you need that group of audio to live. Let's say I wanted to make an edit and I have various components, and I'll show you what happens when you make an edit on Audacity. So let's say I wanted this song to be there, right here, and I want this song to be right here, um, and I don't want that to change. If I do make an edit, like if I take out this big chunk of audio right here, um, you'll see that things did not move the way I intended it to. But basically, if you wanna make an edit, and you don't want to move various groups of audio. Let's see if I can try it. Oh, okay. Right. Can you hear me? I feel like I did all the necessary steps in like a very quick fashion. All right, so let's say once again, I want to edit this chunk out. Okay, yeah, so anyway, like you can edit things out, you can use this time syncing tool and it kind of basically like syncs everything and locks everything together. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, to use the time sync tool, you have to like control all, command all to select all the various audio components. You select the time sync and then like everything is locked in its place. So for instance, I make this edit right here. Everything kind of like moves with it. Whereas if I didn't have the time syncing tool, yeah, nothing moves. I kind of want it all to move together. So that's the time syncing tool. It's very helpful, like I said, if you have a group of files, like I showed you that like huge project I did. If I wanted to make an edit here and I didn't want, like I wanted everything to kind of like move with it, I would use the time syncing tool so that I don't have to individually drag 
the audio files um, manually. That would be quite time consuming. So basically like that's, that's the pretty, like the skinny on Audacity. Um, like I said, there are lots of things that you can do. You can go onto this effect, um, effect <laughs> list, I guess, and select various different things to get the effect that you want. Um, in my last project, I played a lot with something called the high pass and low pass filter and the EQ. So basically what that tries to do is like, I wanted to make a song sound like it was coming from a basement, the next house over. So you would use stuff like the high pass filter and the low pass filter to achieve that effect. You can also achieve that effect with the EQ. EQ basically is just like, it stands for equalization and it's the process of like eliminating or adding certain frequencies with every piece of audio, there are high frequencies and low frequencies. Let's say you wanted to have the effect of a song being played like it was, it was being played out of headphones. So all you would have to do is like adjust the EQ, eliminate all of the low frequencies and you would just keep the high frequencies and it would sound like, it would sound very tinny, like it was coming off of earbuds. So once again, on Audacity, you can do some quick edits. Um, you can also do fade-ins, fade-outs, volume gain adjustment. You can do multi-tracking, time syncing, which allows you to lock everything in place, kind of like a lasso tool. Um, and you can, do, you can do a standard music show that way. I wish I could know if like anybody had questions, but I guess not. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the presentation. Um, once again, sorry for all the technical difficulties. Of course, the like radio workshop would have problems with the audio. That's just how it has to be. Um, so once you have your show application sent in and you're doing some shows, you've done your pilot show, it's always a good idea to think about the general branding of your show. So for instance, um, CJLO has an in-house art director. You can work with her to develop the visual component of your show, the logo slash branding, or you can make something yourself using Canva. Social media email, be sure to create social media pages for your show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure to add an email account so that publicists can put, that, can put you on their publicist list and send you albums for free. Uh, that's a great way to access music and learn about music and also just like a more efficient way to get audio files and you get music for free, which is like pretty nice. But I guess in this like streaming age, that's not so important. <laughs> um, and then, of course, once you're established, you can have special shows to do something kind of meaningful and impactful. Um, that's a great way to build and grow your audience to spread the word about your show. Like I mentioned, I'm doing this project right now where I'm celebrating the 10th anniversary of this album I like. And I'm seeing my show's audience grow exponentially because of that. Like the listens on Mixcloud are like pretty high compared to what I typically see for my show. Uh, and that's just a great way, to, like I said, to build an audience and then further grow your audience. So questions right now, I'm going to say once again, apologies for all the technical difficulties. I can understand why that would be off-putting and why you would not feel engaged because it's annoying to have to sit through technical difficulties. So thank you to the CSU for bearing with me and thank you to all of you for bearing with me. Um, once again, if you're interested in doing a radio show and you need some more help using Audacity or help with any kind of editing, or audio production, you can always go to CJLO. We're currently looking for new show applications. So if you're interested in doing that, it's always a great way to gain experience in audio production and audio engineering. You can talk to me. Once again, my name is Francella. I'm the station manager at CJLO. You can go to our website, which is www.cjlo.com, where you can fill out applications to be a DJ or a general volunteer. So that's that's basically it. The national nightmare is over. 
So thank you all for joining me again. I'm so sorry that it was kind of chaotic, but I hope you can find something of value from that. Uh, like I said, Audacity is free and open source. You could download it right now if you wanted to. And there are various tutorials online that can help you with different components of audio production from like pretty standard stuff to more complicated things. So I think that's it for me. I don't know what happens at the end. Maybe someone can write in the chat. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, thank you again for, for joining me. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope it was helpful in some regard. And again, if you have any questions, it's just manager at CJLO 1690 AM. Bye-bye.